Bro. Hi, I'm Jules Rubak, and this is a follow-up to uh, the presentation we did a week ago at Cinema 2.0, the launch for the uh, 770. Uh, what we're showing is a couple of new things that we weren't able to talk about last week uh, that I think are really interesting. So we're announcing today uh, that we are developing LightStage. Uh, LightStage LC is a separate company for capturing and rendering uh, really high-quality 3D characters. And the LightStage is an interesting technology that was developed uh, at USC uh, by Paul Debevec and Tim Hawkins. And, uh, and it's been really, you know, it solves the problem of the uncanny valley as far as characters go. So we're very pleased to be able to announce that we can actually take this data and start working with it and applying it in our projects. So if you take a look at what we were doing years ago to do characters and animation, uh, it was you know, a very straight, it was limited by the fact that our artists could only create so much detail in a head or a, a human form. And, uh, and this is the normal map for that head, and this is you know, a really complex skin shader that you know, we wrote to try to recreate what, what humans look like. And in a lot of ways, both these problems go away with the light stage. The light stage, first of all, can capture a real person. So to generate this head, you know, an artist doesn't need to sit there and sculpt it. We can essentially put a woman in, a, in, in the light stage, which is a domed uh, capture environment, and it captures all the surfaces and all the normals for it. Uh, and all the details, including the hair, and it captures it in full motion. So you have to understand that unlike a traditional motion capture where there is either you know, something makeup applied to the uh, face or dots point at, put on the face, we can just put somebody in the light stage and they can do their lines and speak and it does full motion capture optically. So it gets the full data set of uh, you know, essentially all the points on their face. And this is in fact the rendered version of that light stage. This is all the data that's captured on the light stage accumulated. It's not a photograph. This is a fully relit head uh, based on the model you just saw and it's you know obviously a lot of data but the work that we were announced that we announced uh, last week with the uh, GPU compression decompression we're going to be applying to light stage data sets so that we can start loading them in real time and rendering them uh, you know not just for film work but in, in games as well. So the light stage data I think really closes the uncanny valley gap. I mean this particularly this kind of data where we have all the relighting information stored for every single pixel, uh, it's exciting. And it gives us you know, really high quality characters that, that I think look completely real. And that's, I think, one of the things we showed last week at the Cinema 2.0 event was that we could do scenes and, and, and cities and, and things that look really good. And this, and this essentially gives us people. Um, and it goes even further than that, but we'll certainly be announcing more as we, as we get further along, uh, you know, working on light stage. Um, I'm going to show one more thing that we didn't get a chance to really uh, show last week as well, which is um, some of the real-time stuff for the voxel rendering. Um, you know, we basically had two separate demos, one for just showing the, the fact that we can look around a voxel I've seen and uh, render it. And this one now, this, this demo is a slight update on the original one, where I'm able to actually look around and uh, essentially place voxels, voxels in the scene, but also relight it as well. So this is part two of three. Uh, that we're releasing. This shows essentially us going through the scene, selecting an object and either rendering it with a full lighting pipeline or just doing the global illumination pass. And then we can also just you know, use the normals to do you know, full, totally new novel reflections on. But you can essentially see that the voxels, even in this fairly low resolution form, uh, can capture, you know, do relighting information and, and capture all these different details. And uh, we can do that as we're navigating through the scene. So this is sort of part two of our, uh, our Ruby real-time demo. And part three of it's going to show, uh, as, as a next step, uh, the full navigation through the voxel scenes. And uh, that's going to be dependent on the compression that we're developing, because right now, the reason why we're not loading the entire animation is that the, the frame data is about 700 megabytes for every frame. We can easily compress that down to 100, 1 100th the size. We're looking to do it about 1,000th the size. And then with that, we'll be able to load much larger voxel data sets and actually have you navigate pretty far throughout the scene and still keep the uh, ray tracing and, and, and voxelization uh, good enough that you don't really see any, any sort of uh, pixel, pixelized or voxelized uh, data sets too closely. So one more uh, demo that's worth showing, I think, is, is related to the light stage. And that, you can see that on the right here. Um, and uh, that basically is a really a mesh that is generated from you know one version of light stage. It doesn't have all the light stage data in there. Um, but what, what you can see from from this example is one reason why voxel rendering may be important. So this is really just using a very simple uh, polygonal mesh. Even so, there's, it's about 32 million triangles just to render the scene. So I'm going to show the, the wireframe of it. Um, and it's, you know, you can just see that the data is so dense. Uh, you know, you can, I mean, everything from the uh, 
uh, you know, from the eyes to the, uh, the eyelashes are all there. And we're only really using a small subset of the point cloud that's generated from the light stage. So if we move to voxel rendering, which we're planning to do for light stage as soon as we're done with the Ruby demo, we'll be able to have voxelized assets rendering in real time at much higher resolution than this. And that's going to be giving us characters that look better than anything we can show in any of these videos. Uh, and we should have that ready probably within, before the end of the year. So it's exciting stuff. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the demos.